Number one, surveys. You could set up an internal survey using something like SurveyMonkey, Google Forms or Informsly to ask your sales team or customer service team about the interactions that they have with customers. They probably know a lot about what your customers want that will be really valuable for a CRO exercise. Google Analytics. You can use Google Analytics during your research phase to track what people are searching for on your website and find out which pages are most important to them. Once you've got your web page test designed and developed, you can also use Google Analytics to run the A-B tests for free. Live chat. This is a great way to compile a list of customer anxieties and common questions. Some live chat platforms include Snap Engage and Olark, but there are lots out there to choose from. The problem with live chat is that it needs to be done really well in order to be useful. There needs to be someone or a team of people, depending on how much traffic your website gets, constantly managing it, otherwise it's likely to annoy potential customers instead of helping them. Phone tracking. It's important to use phone tracking to get a comprehensive view of your traffic. Examples of phone tracking providers include TTNC, MediaHawk and ResponseTap. By using something like this, you'll be able to measure how many people are converting through phone calls. User testing. A key part of conversion rate optimization is seeing how people who have never been to your website before navigate and use your site. You can set up user tests on a number of different platforms such as user testing, Userlytics and Try My UI. Tests vary in cost but are usually around 30 to 50 pounds each. You'll be able to choose your parameters, for example the age, gender and location of the people going through the test and the questions that you ask them. We recommend being very, very careful with how you word your questions so that they're not open to interpretation or misunderstanding. Bad questions are a costly mistake. Click or heat maps. Click maps allow you to track where users actually click on your website, either on desktop or mobile devices. You can use this data to work out which buttons they're engaging with, how far down the page they're scrolling and much more. They're useful for understanding which of your CTAs are underperforming and then testing out new CTAs to see if your conversion rate increases. Examples of click map providers include Hotjar, Clicktail and Crazy Egg. Customer feedback software. Creating a way for website users to give you direct feedback on your site can be a very useful way to improve your website and make it more customer focused. Platforms like Qualaroo offer inbuilt website surveys and Usabilla provides a way for your customers to rate your emails and your website. Copy and paste tracker. If your website is a knowledge hub, then it's likely that people will be copying and pasting or sharing your content. It might be helpful for you to understand which bits of content they're sharing the most in order for you to create more content like that. Tools like the Tint Measure Copy and Paste will tell you just this. The objective is to find out why people are not converting and then fix any problem areas in the website to encourage them to start converting into customers. The digital marketing manager must be well informed with data but not overwhelmed. Try to use multiple sources of data but make sure that the process is fast and do not get bogged down into the wealth of potential data out there. As a rule of thumb, at Footprint Digital, we don't spend more than a week pulling together the information. And in real terms, this process might take you a total of eight hours. This can be done in several ways and draw from a huge range of sources. Our method is not exhaustive, but it does give a reasonable range of useful information quickly. Once you've collected all of this data, you should be able to see the problems that people are having with your website. Create a list of all of the outcomes from the research. Also, write lists of the calls to actions, sales messages and potential customer anxieties. You can then start to create some new designs that incorporate better messaging and design. Footprint Digital produced the following reports. Tracking check. You can't achieve anything if the data from which you're making decisions is incorrect. Make sure Google Analytics is installed and tracking. You need to analyse and ensure that all of the goals are tracked in Google Analytics and that they're working correctly. This includes adding the code required to run the testing platform that you wish to use. Google Analytics Analysis 
This report focuses on an in-depth look at a large amount of existing data using Google Analytics or another web analytics service if you prefer. These services can provide crucial information about where people are bouncing from your site, which is when they're leaving after just arriving, or about specific pages that are not engaging users adequately. Google Analytics can also be set up to track your goals. The most important outcomes are to find which pages to focus your work on, as it's unwise to perform CRO across your whole website all at once. This can be found through using a comparison of bounce rate against sessions on the landing page report tab. Of course, there are other ways, but this gives a fast and simple view. Existing documentation report. Here, you need to analyze all digital and non-digital information for unique selling points, calls to action, customer anxieties, and important sales messages. The goal is to ensure that your website accurately reflects your marketing literature and vice versa. Sales and Client Services Team Insights The best form of data is qualitative human feedback. This really helps to get under the skin of your customers. Your sales team probably talk to prospective clients all day every day. They're used to all of the questions that people ask. Often these are so common that the sales team are able to instinctively give an answer. There will be many things that your sales team say that have not yet made it to the website in frequently asked questions pages or even on product or service pages. Competitor analysis. This is a view of how you compare with your competition. We typically carry out a comparison with five main competitors on a variety of dimensions. Look at methods that your competitors are using and repurpose this as inspiration to produce even better designs and usability on your website. Compare what they're doing well with any problems that your website may have. Remember not to plagiarize, you are unique and beautiful. Customer feedback analysis. Analyze feedback from your customers to see what they say about your website. This can often be done through reading the last 50 contact forms that were sent through your site, as well as from questions that customers have emailed in. Remove any identifying information, such as email address or name, and then sift through your stored customer emails and tally up the most common queries. If people have to email you to ask something, then it means that they haven't been able to find that information on your website, which is a major barrier to them converting. User testing video analysis. It's very hard to think objectively about your own website and almost impossible to see it with fresh eyes. That's why watching somebody else use your website for the first time can offer really useful information about why people aren't converting. We typically run three user tests using a third party for these kinds of insights. Websites like user testing are set up for this purpose and you can set up your own test choosing how many users you want to test your website, the demographics of those users and questions that they will have to answer whilst navigating your site. Once you have received the videos of people using your website and answering your chosen questions, you can analyze them and make a list of areas which may need improving. Some key areas that users may have problems with include understanding what your business actually does, navigating around your website, understanding what and who your website is for, and completing the product purchase journey. Qualitative feedback. This improves questioning impartial users to gather their perspectives on your site's performance. Ask users to complete a short questionnaire with relevant questions such as, what can you tell me about the company from the homepage? Or how would you find more information about this product? Fresh perspectives on the design or usability of your site can be invaluable. Now that you know the problems with your website, it's time for the fun to begin, fixing it. We usually think of this in eight steps. Step number one, start with the end in mind. What's the primary objective of your website? Focus on this and work backwards. Step two, usability or persuasion. Are users failing to convert because the website is difficult to use or because they're not being persuaded by your messaging? Use your research to find out which this is. This will help shape your CRO process. Step three, what is the purpose of each page on your website? Seek clarity, get deep into the specifics to figure out exactly which parts of each page are working towards this purpose, and more importantly, which parts are not. Step four, remove everything that doesn't fit in. 
be ruthless because any fluff left over might mitigate the success of your CRO. You may be left with a blank page, but don't panic. This is all part of the process. Step five, flip the focus to the customer. A lot of businesses can get so excited about their products that they focus their entire site on what they want to sell. Good CRO will always focus the website onto the user, streamlining their experience. Step six, use your research. Your customer questions, user test analysis and competitor analysis can provide crucial insight into what users want and how you can deliver it. Make lists of questions that came up during your research and use these. Step seven, hypothesize. Find creative and interesting ways to answer the questions you found while keeping one eye on the design aesthetic of your site. Answering everything in detail can be useless if you make your site horrible to use and look at. Finally, step eight, sketch out your designs and stand back. Fresh eyes and new ideas can help at this point to refresh your concepts and improve them further, so get somebody else involved. Having completed these steps, you should be left with a fresh and focused website design. But is it better? It's time to put that to the test. Potentially the most crucial part of the whole process, testing is when your ideas are exposed to the cruel scrutiny of real users. The most common type of testing for CRO is known as split A-B testing. This is a direct comparison with a random 50% of users being sent to your new site and the other half to your old site. Using Google Analytics, you can set this up automatically and collect the relevant data on goal conversion. This allows you to contrast the performance of the two sites and see if the changes made any difference. Remember, this is run on live traffic and people don't know they're part of a test. If this testing shows an improvement for the new design over the old one, then well done. You've successfully optimised your website and you can make your test page the live version for everybody at least for the moment. Remember, CRO is an ongoing process and your site may need more tweaking in the future.